Hey everybody, I'm Jason Klaus, and welcome to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here tonight. Uh, we are going to take a special look at what is traditionally known as the most wonderful time of the year and what makes it the most wonderful time of the year. In preparation for, for tonight's show, I wanted to have a special guest on here. And I couldn't think of another guy who, who better fits that bill to talk about this particular topic than Will Narona. Now, Will is a good friend of mine, and he's also a union brother. We, we work together at uh, Flint Assembly and proud members of UAW Local 598. Will, I appreciate you being on here, man. How, how's it going today? Thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Definitely excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, the pleasure is all on this side of the table. No, no. Can, can I tell you that? <laughs> um, obviously, it's December. And in December, we come into the holiday season. And for a lot of us, this is the one time of year that we truly look forward to. All the, fe all the festivities, all the, all the traditions, the Christmas lights. The anticipation, if you have young kids, of the big guy making his annual trip down the chimney, it goes across the board. But there are those people who absolutely do not like this time of year. In fact, they dread it. Well, I saw something this week, and I talked a little bit about it er earlier on the Klaus of the Heart podcast that dropped on Tuesday, that a statistic came across to my radar and it just kind of floored me. Like over 60% of, of the people polled hate this time of year. And, and to me, that breaks my heart because anybody who knows me on any level knows what a huge deal Christmas has always been to me. Now we're gonna focus a lot on Christmas because by and large that seems to be the, the more popular it, of the of the holidays but this month man there's a, a variety of different holidays and traditions that are are that are celebrated and we don't mean to to disparage any of them you know hanukkah and kwanzaa and, th and things of this nature sure obviously very important to those who who celebrate but you know when you think of december you think of the holidays well what's the first thing when when i say to you we're, we're coming into the holiday season. What's the first few things that, that come to, to your mind in terms of anticipation for this time of year? Well, I mean, a, a lot of things come into play, but the biggest thing for me that comes around this time of the year is that it's almost kind of like it's a rebirth for me before the new year, mm -hmm. you know? And New Year's, everybody's resolutions and what am I gonna do different? What am I gonna do better? And, and now is the time for me. Now's the time when I like to call it last chance. That is a very unique way of looking at it. And I had, I had not, that's a tremendous way of looking at it because in so many aspects, you're right. I mean, they, they've written Christmas songs about it. You know, the, the, the end of one year, the start of, of another yeah. one, right? So it is that time and I very much do the same thing. I guess I just didn't realize it until you put it in, you know, into words or what or what have you. But, um, you kind of look back on the year that was. What yeah. worked, what didn't, what can I apply to to this new year? Um, I think for a, for a lot of us, especially as we come into the holiday season, a lot of us, we look forward to spending that time with friends, with family, you know, especially if, if you have young kids because for the longest time, I had this mentality that Christmas was really geared towards the kids. You know, they're getting ready for Santa Claus, and there's that that look of innocence, the sparkle in their eyes. It's just something that, like for me, my parents made sure that my brother and I had a tremendous Christmas seat. You know, it it didn't always have to be about about the gifts under the tree. Sure. It is about the connection that we had as a family because yeah. by and large, you know, my parents worked all the time, especially my dad. Like he all the time was was working, but during that time he he was home. 
and it was kind of our our way to reconnect to re reform the dynamic of our family then you know my aunt and my cousins would come over and it became a real thing where there is that reconnection with those people your friends your family the ones you don't see on a re on a regular basis um, as I look back on 40 plus years of, of Christmases. We don't want to throw myself too far. Young under man, the bus young here. man. Well, listen, it, it all depends on, on the day, right? Right. Um, as you were growing up, I'm sure you had your, your traditions and, thing, and things of this nature. What, what stands out to you when you look back on, as a child, coming into your teens, your early adulthood, and, and even now, because you've got kids, and mm -hmm. I'm sure Christmas has always been, you know, something special on, on, on the horizon, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a premier time of the year where, you know, as any holiday, it's a platform to, for making memories, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but Christmas, it's, you know, when I was a kid, it was all about, you know, I'm from Downriver originally, and there's a city called Lincoln Park there and they have a Calder's Dairy, you know, and it's been there forever for a long time. And, you know, that was the time of the year when, again, my dad wasn't working so much. He had a little bit of time off, but we'd go down there, we'd go to a fresh Calder's chocolate milk and they'd have carolers there and you could have hot cocoa or whatever. And then we went from there right to Heinz Drive and did the Heinz Drive drive and, you know, just holiday things, but we did that every year. Mm -hmm. So it was one thing where sometimes, you know, as a kid, you, Sometimes you don't look forward to it. It's like, oh man, I got to do this again. Right. But then, as an adult going into, like you said, your teens and early, ad early adulthood, man, you look back and it's like, man, I just want to do that again. Right. You know? A much simpler time, right? Oh, it's it's all about the simplicity. And as you get older, you appreciate those things more because they mean more. That's another aspect that I kind of want to touch on. And I guess the whole purpose of of this episode tonight is to bring everybody back on one page. What is the basic fundamentals in terms of the meaning of Christmas? Now, it varies with, you know, from person to person. You know, if you are somebody who is very much a, a religious person, then obviously this centers around celebrating the birth of Jesus. Um, for those who don't subscribe to that particular ph philosophy, it's, I, I feel like, that's where a lot of these people that polled, that, that were polled, that said, I don't like the holidays, they don't, they don't observe that. And that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm not here to judge one way or the other. Sure. You are entitled to believe and to, you know, like what, whatever you want. But I feel like those who have a pretty good understanding on what the true meaning of this holiday season is, those are the ones who are by and large happier, because I, I'm sure you've, you, you that you've seen this on social media and in like memes and things of this nature. Like one one stuck in my crawl. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Like I saw it, and I instantly got so angry about it. <laughs> it said so because somebody had made a meme and it was a picture of these these freighters that are trying to dock in California. Yeah. And it said Christmas is on hold because your Christmas is on these boats. And that pissed me off, I'm yeah. not gonna lie, because if that's what you're basing, what the foundations and what, what the meaning of the holidays are is based on what you can buy or how many gifts you put under the tree or whatever, you have totally missed the point. Would you, would you agree with that? I would definitely agree. And to piggyback what you just said, I seen the similar meme, but it had people running towards it and it said Black Friday sale. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well. it's, I mean, as you know, people have lost sight along the way and with things that have happened in history so far that it's more about what's the best thing to get, what did I get you, what did you remember what I got you, instead of what did we do that Christmas, mm -hmm. you know? What, what did we go out and do? What did we do for somebody, right. you know? And that's, that's the point of me being here today with you is we want to bring awareness that, you know, it's, it's about giving and it's about caring and it's about doing something that's out of your wheelhouse rather than 
it's just another Christmas and we got to do Black Friday shopping and oh my God, geez. Right. A couple of things that, that stand out and this is another reason why I, why I wanted you on here tonight is, okay. um, you, I mean, you, you, you nailed it perfectly because you, you, you use the phrase, oh, I have to. I have to do this. I have to go Black Friday shopping. I have to decorate the cookies. I have to string the lights up or whatever. If you add the preface, I have to, you've already put yourself in kind of a negative mindset in terms of what this is supposed to be. It's, yeah. It shouldn't be, I have to do anything. I want to. Yeah. I want to give back. I want to decorate. I want to spread this holiday cheer because this holiday cheer thing it, it's almost become cliche but i mean at the same time man that it capulates so much happiness in people mm -hmm. you know because no matter what we have going on in our lives and i realize that across the board you know what whatever you do wherever you live whatever the case may be we're all going through something. Absolutely. You know, the, not every, every day. day is going to be sunshine and rainbows. It just isn't. You know, you could be have struggles at work. You could have struggles at home. You could have struggles in a, in a variety of ways. Um, you're coming into a holiday season, and I talked about this last month with, with Q, our friend Q. You know Q. Yeah, brother Q. Um, you know, when we were talking about, you know, Thanksgiving and, and, and all of that mm -hmm. is... A lot of us are coming into this holiday season for the first time without a loved one, yeah. and that, that can obviously alter your your entire you know perception of the holiday season. And I totally get that. You know, you you can go back into the archives here on ONTV and and and, and watch that that particular episode. But right. kind of pig, you know piggybacking off that, it's I've always maintained well as especially as I've gotten older. It's not about what I get. It's about what I can give. Yeah. What can I do to help a less fortunate? Because you hear that all the time. You see it all the time. Anytime you go to a store and there's a dude, you know, with the Santa suit on, ringing a bell for the Salvation Army, um, that's they're trying to do good for less fortunate people to make sure that, you know there is some sort of help there is some sort of, of of support for these families that may be struggling right now mm -hmm. because let's face it you know we're still very much dealing with the the effects and the ripple effects of a pandemic and a lot of people still have not gotten back on solid ground for, from this right uh, right unfortunately it's just the way that it is so uh, you know there's so many con contributors to what you know, your that fire of Christmas spirit is starting to get put out, and it would be real easy to just let that that flame, ex you know, be extinguished. I refuse to, you know, to be a part of that. If there's something that I can do that's going to shine some light in somebody's day, in somebody's life, in somebody's season, I'm all on board. What can I do? I wish more people were like that. Sure. You are one of those people. I appreciate you that. You are. Back at you, brother. Well, listen, man. Um, you know, you are a proud member of the Veterans Committee for our, for our local. You do a tremendous amount of charity work. You know, our place of employment is very, very much involved with the old newsboys mm -hmm. in, in the Flint area. Yeah, God bless them. It's a have, great program. Have, have you worked with them exclusively? This uh, season or last or anything like last that? Last season I did, and that was my first kind of uh, introduction of the old newsboys, you know, and thankfully to our, our president, uh, you know, Ryan Balkowski. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got Great a, guy. Oh, yeah, I got an opportunity to, to be a part of that, and it was just, uh, it was very different for me. You know, I mean, I did a lot of good things at my old local, and I was involved in a lot of things, but for me with this, it was more like they're doing something with the community and you know, it's directly associated with the community. It seems like it's getting bigger every year. Mm -hmm. You know, like this, today they're having a, a Flint Firebirds game and it's all the proceeds are going to old newsboys and they're selling bricks for, you know, the, the veterans of McFarland Park, you mm -hmm. know, and and just to be a part of that was was really a, a present to me for the for Christmas time. So as you, as you 
work with these organizations and, and things of this nature, kind of talk me through, because we, we all have kind of like a preconceived notion of what goes, goes into something like that. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, regardless if it's because of what you've seen on TV or how it's presented in movies and things of this nature, because you've seen a bunch of holiday movies where people are working like a soup kitchen or, yep. or, or something like that, but you don't really have that perspective t to see how it affects for the lack of a better term, real people. Um, you know, because what you see on TV, you know, that's manufactured for, for the, yeah, the, that, that for good the lack feeling. Of better terms. Right. Right. But you, I'm sure, in, in, not just with the old newsboys, but just about everything that you have your hand in, in terms of working with the veterans a, a committee and things of this nature, or just anything around the plant. Right. Um, you have an opportunity to see how that affects real people. Right. Is there something that stands out to where, you know, because we work a lot of hours. Oh, you know, yeah. And what we, the kind of work we do is very f physical. It takes a toll on us. And, not, mental, and mental. I was just going to say, yeah. not just a physical toll, but a mental one, too, yeah. because... Let's be honest. If we ran the show, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. <laughs> I don't know. Well, listen. I feel like more common sense could be applied, but that's the story for okay. I'll give you that. Day. I'll nice. give you that. <laughs> um, my point is, is that you have a unique perspective. You've seen how this affects real people in real time. Yeah. Is there any instance that stands out to you that you remember that that made you feel like? I did something good or I was a part of something sure, good. Sure, sure. I mean, again, this has been a totally positive experience for me coming to this local, but the biggest thing I noticed that, like one of the first things I got invited to uh, by a brother named Chris Ridley, mm -hmm. who does the, you know, the community uh, portion of that, our local, he invited me to the Marta Luna Food, Food Bank. You know, and again, it's not Veterans Committee, it's not old newsboys, but it was just something that he reached out to me, we were on strike together, and he's like, hey, you know, if, if you get a tech and come on out, you know, and at that time I lived close in Flint. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and did it on a Wednesday after work and, you know, I was tired, but, you know, I went there and, and didn't know what to expect, didn't know what I was going to do. You know, there's no preconceived things or, or, you know, these are the do's and don'ts. You just show up. And I mean, that was the most rewarding experience above the experiences that I've had so far, because again, he, he just reached out without knowing me or my background or, you know what my intentions were or try to if I was trying to like put myself up in a social platform or get noticed or something like that he just reached out because he said you know you seem like a good guy and I went out there and it was just uh, it was good because there were there wasn't cameras there wasn't the Facebook thing or I'm, I'm at the Marta Luna kind of thing it was just we showed up I mean there was so many families that came so many different kinds of situations with people going on you know where they had things going on but but just the sense of gratitude you know, on both sides, even them having us there as local 598 and, and chipping in our time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've done it a lot of times and I plan on to keep doing it because it's just one of those things that you go out and, and then you feel like you did something. You feel like you made a difference, you know, in, in the community, in the direct community. It's not like, oh, I, I did this for Facebook. I did this to get a, a higher position or something like that. It's, it's for you, you know, and it's for the community. You, you you almost make this a little too easy for me in terms of... <laughs> I tried to. Listen, man. <laughs> I don't want you to be nervous on no, your show. I, listen, <laughs> this, is, this is like my home away from home here. Amen. This, this set. So, um, I, you, the transitions from one thing to another, like you, it's almost like you're in my brain. I'm like, okay, we're going to you know kind of make this transition. You set it up for me perfectly. Yeah. The people that do this stuff for their own personal notoriety is one of those things that is, in my opinion, one of the most backhanded things that you can do. It's great that you're a body and you are in the process of helping out an organization or you're there as sort of like manpower or, or something like this, but if you're doing it more 
because you want to get more likes on your Facebook page or you want to be shared or you want to be held in some sort of higher regards on some sort of platform, to me, I feel like it's kind of like you're, you're diminishing a lot of what this is, what this is su supposed to be. Yeah. Q and I talked last month about um, you know these people that go to work at these soup kitchens during the Thanksgiving holiday, and they're more worried about taking s selfies yeah. while they're in the kitchen than they are you know handing out the food to the people that need it. I mean that's the whole damn reason why why we're here, and you know th they're they're more interested in being some sort of internet star. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, th and I mean, this can be broken down, and we can actually take this to a completely <laughs> other episode. But um, trying to keep things on track here, and I feel like that a, a lot of this is, I just, it drives me nuts because when you embark on this kind of mindset, mm -hmm. you're compromising the whole purpose. Um, of the of the whole holiday season, and for what? So, yeah. Well, I, and I try to remain neutral in that too, because we have to. You know, it's 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 a different time now. So we're in the season of giving and forgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if you come out to a, an event like that, or you're doing things on social media because you want that notoriety, or because you want to get noticed, or you want to you know, have more of a, a uplink of friends or something like that. That's fine too, but you get a lot of people that will do that initially and then realize, you know, this is something that's pretty great. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that is changing my life and I don't even know it. Right. You know, and that's happened to me a lot, you know, with the transition of my old plant to the new plant was, you know, opening the doors to new possibilities and to new friends mm -hmm. and, and to new brothers and sisters and like, you know, hey, there's a lot going on here that I want to be a part of, you know, and some people are going to close the doors and some people are going to open them, but neither way, you got to do what you got to do for you, and that's a good thing. I, uh, you're, <laughs> you're awesome, you know what I mean? Right back <laughs> at you, brother. I was waiting um, to hear that. I hear I, that on I a daily basis You uh, <laughs> from you. Listen. You, you and I talk, we, we yeah. talk on the line, and um, you know, one, one of the things about the 2019 strike that, that we were on is, and I, I, have, I have said this on numerous times, I have mentioned this on the podcast, I have talked to you know, our colleagues, our coworkers, yeah. and I have maintained that I mean, there was a lot of good that came out of that strike. There was some bad, too, to make, make no mistake about it, because that is an unfavorable si situation. But I have always maintained that one of the highlights that I had um, in dealing with that particular time was that's when I was introduced you know, to you. And I remember very rarely, well, I come away from meeting s somebody from, you know, for the very first time. And I feel like, man, this is a dude that I have a connection with on some regard. I had never met you before. Right. I was dropping off T-shirts that I had printed. Just out of the blue. Yeah. And you yeah. happened to be at, at the union hall. And I was, just, I was waiting for other people who, who had placed these orders or what have you. And you came up to me and we just started talking like we had known each other our entire lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember thinking, and, and I said that night, that is one of the nicest guys I've ever met while working at this place. And, you know, that's before I knew, where, you know, your backstory that you had come from a different plant, and, but you came to Flint and you were very, you were very visual. You, like you were all over the place, you know, looking to help out and things of this nature. I'm yeah. like, this is my kind of guy. You know what I mean? Because you do you 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 don't do it because you want to be perceived as a rock star. You don't do it for popularity. You do it because, by and large, it's the right thing. Yeah. And you're trying to hand out. You're trying to help other people that are in need. And in that case, 
it was other brothers and sisters that were struggling because we were yeah. on strike, right? Yeah. You have made that transition. Okay, the strike is long over. We're we 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 we've been back to work. Amen. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Um, but at the same time, you have now transitioned that to these these bigger projects that do make such a significant impact. And the thing with you and I is, you know, I've, I've talked about this too, like I don't need recognition for anything that I may do or say that makes a difference in somebody's life. Sure. You want to thank me, pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I feel like in this day and age, especially in the holiday season, I know we're going off on sidebars, but you know that's just <laughs> what I do. Um, we're, we're, we're getting back on track here. Um, the holidays is very much this opportunity to really make a difference in people's lives. Last chance. It, it, last chance. Because the 12th month of the year, you're looking at everything. And we, you know, we talked about this a little bit ago. Um, you, you, you look back on the previous year of what was. Your greatest accomplishments, the most damning of failures, um, and everything in between. And I feel like every single time of year that we come into the holidays, like we have to get real with ourselves because if there's an aspect that we're not happy with, we have to kind of, you know, we got to get right with the person in the mirror before we can even attempt to have a better new year and then, 100%. you know, mo moving on, you know, beyond that. But at the same time, man, this, this is the time of year that we can really look, a, you know, what's truly important. And what's truly important is we got to find a way to get back on one page as a society. And I realize there are a lot of people that dread the holidays for a variety of reasons. I understand that. My heart breaks for you. Um, but I feel like when that's the case, it's because, once again, you are missing the entire point of the holiday season. And that that fundamental act of of giving back of helping yeah. out somebody else you know that may not ne necessarily benefit you other than the fact that you have the self satisfaction that you have made a tremendously positive impact on somebody else's life and you may not not even realize amen. it would, amen would you agree with that oh absolutely and it's it's all about two of just getting out of your comfort zone you know, because that that's the thing I love the most is that, you know, especially in today's world, everything is right there, right now, at, at your fingertips, you know, at the drop of a hat, you know, here's a dollar, here's a dollar. But you can tailor make your life tower and you can just be comfortable in your bubble, you know. But th like I said, last chance. And the reason I say that is because this is your last chance of this year. And God, what a year it's been. Right. So let's go out with a bang and just do one thing. Start with one thing. Mm -hmm. Out of your comfort zone, whether it's by yourself, with your family, with your union brothers and sisters, with your friends, that benefits somebody else. You know, and I'm not talking about buying something for somebody. I'm talking about doing the, the Marta Luna or like we have the, the laying of the wreaths coming up at the Great Lakes National Cemetery mm -hmm. for the Veterans Committee, and you know, and that's that's something they do every year, and it's a big thing. And it's different every year that I've done it so far, and that'll be this 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 year will be three years, mm -hmm. but it's different people too. It's not just the Veterans Committee. It's this person from the community, community service, or Jason Klaus from the line, or you know, we've had so many different people come out for that, and whatever reason. When they get there, they're like, wow, you know, this is something that's paying respect to our veterans, but then you see the family of those veterans, and then you see strangers, and you see people or, or former veterans, you know, or, or veterans that are not even associated with that cemetery, just like Marta Luna. Mm -hmm. But you come out there, and then you start realizing this is what it's about, you know. It's not about what I've bought somebody. It's not about, you know, how good I looked, you know. It's we did that and it was great it felt good you know but it felt genuine yeah that's the word right there genuine yeah 
it felt genuine yeah. and I feel like if you don't even think about it it's just something that you're doing because yeah. you know it's the right thing or you want to yeah. help out you want to be a positive influence yeah. you know it's going to come across more genuine than you know yeah. being more worried about taking selfies just just to document I mean taking pictures is one thing I get that it's, you, it's you, the world we live in. You want to document it because yeah. I spent an amazing afternoon with Will and Fallon and whoever else was there mm -hmm. or, or what have you. Right. Um, but if, if, if you're just there for a photo op just to prove, hey, I did something good and that makes me a better person than I may, than, than I may be really, you're, you you kind of missed the whole point. Yeah, and, and things like that, it brings it around full circle for me because that brings me back to childhood. You know, childhood again, like I said, it was something that we did every year going to Calder's and Heinz Drive and stuff like that. Sometimes they didn't want to do it though. Right. But no matter what, you have those lasting memories and that's what's, that's what's gonna count in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of days when you're looking back and you're taking your last breath, like are you gonna remember those selfies or you know you did this and you bought this many presents for your kids or your friends or you know it no it's about those memories you created whether it's with your family whether it's with each other or, or you know what you did as a person to kind of justify your gift of being here on this earth beautifully put brother absolutely be beautifully put um and i can't think of a better way to and this first segment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a quick timeout. Stick around, more of Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV is right after this. The Lake Orion Lighted Christmas Parade returns to downtown Lake Orion on Saturday, December 18th at 6 p.m. This year's theme is Christmas in Toyland and parade participants and downtown businesses are encouraged to light up the night Marching bands, costume characters, and colorful floats will make their way down Broadway Street in the heart of the village. And of course, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be bringing up the rear as they usher in the holiday season. Again, the Orion Area Parade Group invites you to come out for the 2021 Lighted Christmas Parade on December 18th at 6 p.m. For more information, visit orionlightedparade.com or follow them on Facebook for the most recent updates. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Close to the Heart Live on ONTV. I'm with Will Narona, uh, a proud member of UHW Local 598's Veterans Committee as well as just a, one hell of a guy. One of my favorite people. Uh, we certainly appreciate you ta taking time out of your night here to give this a watch. I certainly appreciate it. Um, listen, we've tried to keep things on someone, uh, so somewhat of a light topic, and you know, talking about the holidays and the true meaning of it and, and things of this nature. And we'll get back to that here in a second. Um, but I would be uh, remiss if we didn't at least talk about. Um, a more serious topic here, and that is the tragedy that took place last week, early last week, at Oxford High School. Now, where we are here in Lake Orion, you know, Oxford is the next town over. So obviously, this community was very much, you know, they very much felt the the effects of this horrendous attack, and you know, it ultimately cost the lives of innocent kids you know that's yeah. what they were um, and other ones you know still still fighting for their lives really even in the aftermath and all the information that has come out 
um, in terms of what all went into the planning and the execution of this diabolical scheme. Um, and I'm trying to watch, watch what I say here because I can get pretty fired up about this whole thing. We need to keep this PG, obviously, or they'll kick me off the air, <laughs> right? Um, in, all you know, in, in all sincerity, um, acts like this have got to come to an end. We've got to find a way, we've got to come up with some sort of plan to keep this from happening. Um, four, four families are approaching this holiday with an empty chair at the table, and for what? Um, there, we, all, we all want to know why, you know, why did this happen? You know, you can have, you can have your theories, you can have your thoughts, things of this nature. We're not going to, you know, dive into that here, but just know that as much as this affected the Oxford and Lake Orion area, this really affected a wider spectrum and everybody that, that's involved with it, especially for parents who have kids in, in a public school system. Um, as a father of two, you know, in, in the days after what, what happened in Oxford, I was very nervous about sending my kids to school because you just don't know, and that's an unfortunate thing. Because you're supposed to be able to send, send your kids to school with, with the thought that they are safe, they are protected. Yeah. Um, but even in, in the midst of this unspeakable tragedy, there is things that we can take away from this. There are things that we can learn from this that we can try to come up with a, a plan um, of some sort that will prevent anything like this from happening. Unfortunately, it's going to have to take some sort of compromise and some sort of understanding from people who may not see eye to eye on the number of different details that go along with something like this. But where there's a will, there's a way. Um, at some point, we just have to say enough's enough. And you know, how many innocent lives have to be lost before pe people start becoming s serious about this? Now, I'm not going to sit here for the next 20 minutes and dive into this, Will, but I, I know, you know, when, when you had heard the news, just like anybody else, you know, a number of different emotions come into play with this, right? Absolutely. So, we certainly want to send our, our heartfelt, you know, best wishes, thoughts, and prayers to everybody affected by this tragedy in Oxford, in Lake Orion, and anywhere, and to anybody that was affected by this in some way, shape, or form. So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to, you know, acknowledge that, that you all are in our thoughts and prayers. So I'm um, kind of making not a, not the smoothest of transitions, not, not like you were a, you know, able to provide in the first yeah, segment, and just, just, just taking us <laughs> from one thing to the other. Yeah. Listen, tonight is, is, is different for a number of reasons. Um, I had made mention of it um, earlier this week over on our Facebook page at Klaus to the Heart that there was an announcement coming. And like I get excited when I when I make announcements like this because when I when I make something like that and I say I'm going to do this, it's because we're we're shifting gears a little bit now. During my time here on ON TV in this realm, um, we've kind of played around with different formats, with different guests, trying to find that winning formula that's going to resonate with you, our fans and our viewers. Um, so tonight, in some regards, it's almost bittersweet, but not really, and I'll explain why. Tonight's the last night of Klaus to the Heart Live on ON TV, and before anybody goes, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> Let me explain. Um, over the course of the last year, I've had a variety of guests on here, and they've all been tremendous. And uh, but there is one that has been on here a couple of times that when he's on here, um, the numbers don't lie. 
they they are increased there is more positive feedback and how could we not incorporate that into the show on a regular basis not just incorporate it into the show we are going to revamp everything that we do here on on tv so beginning january the 21st i am very proud and happy to announce that um claude l edwards you know him as Q. Brother Q. Yes, sir. Um, he is going to become a regular part of our time here on ONTV. And like I said, this is the last episode of Klaus to the Heart Live because beginning January 21st, Klaus to the Heart will present the Klaus and Q show here on awesome. ONTV. Awesome. He's he's tremendous. And I and I, you know, he and I have talked quite frank you know fr frequently about this he's a hundred percent on board and in the weeks you know, you know coming up to our our debut of this new new endeavor you will find out more more information some months it'll just be me and him I'll, you know other ones we may have a guest or two here but um i'm very excited about about having q on here oh that's the best best news that i could be on this for yeah that, that's just that's a gift in itself because I've known Q for a while now, and you know we came from Detroit together, and uh, he's just a, a very exceptional person, man. He is just very exceptional, just a beacon of, po of positivity, and he yeah. he always speaks very highly of you. Well, I appreciate that very much. That means a lot, you know, because like I said, he just uh, it, it's that time of the year, a lot of negativity. Yeah, I mean it's everywhere, you know. But like you said, he's that beacon. He's somebody that whether you're talking directly or you're coming in with a bad day, man, that, that dude will put a smile on your face pretty quick. Yeah. But you don't even have to say anything. Right. You know, he just gives you that look. You know, I told him last, well, the night before we worked together, you know, he wears these tank tops. And everybody's, everybody who knows Q at work, he wears these tank tops, man. And this guy's just getting swole like a beast. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you got to stop this, man. You know, I haven't been in the gym for a minute. You got to stop this madness, but he You're looks great. You're making us look bad, Q. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, hey, that's that's who he is. You know, and he just shines every time. And I, I'm I'm very excited to hear that news, man. Yeah, I'm very excited. You know, it was uh, it was brought up to me by by somebody that um, is a huge su supporter of this brand, not just the ON TV show, but across to all of our platforms on the Jack Creations Podcast Network. And um, she had actually mentioned to me, you know, there, there, there's something about that Q guy. And I really feel like you need to incorporate him more. And the more I thought about it, and when he was on here, you know, last month, I got a, a lot of positive feedback through DMs and emails and things of this nature. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I went up to him and, you know, I got, was all serious about it. You know <laughs> what I mean? I was like, um, Q, we need to have a talk. Man. Like, I sat at his desk You crashed the show, man. Yeah. Well, you're right. I was like, have you seen any of the feedback from the show? And he's like, uh, no. I'm like, well, we need to have a talk. I was like, and that's when I kind of went into the, mm -hmm. I really would like to incorporate you as a regular thing. Here. Sure, sure. And what, what, what if we just revamped the entire experience and we made this its own entity under our umbrella of you know the podcast and the youtube stuff and let's make this our own thing and he was 100 percent on board man um that's awesome it is and and it's important to have that kind of support yeah. you know what i mean and he like you have always always had my back and um you know, always that's brother. that's that that kind of stuff is immeasurable you know what i mean because that's what puts real life in perspective you know that's what's important and kind of kind of getting back on here in in terms of the whole hot of the whole holiday thing i have a couple of things i want to say then i'll turn i'll turn it over to to you here's the thing folks it's not about the the number of presents under the christmas tree it does not matter how much money you spend to get these said gifts, it's none of that matters. A lot like, you know, p piggybacking off what Will said earlier here tonight is, by and large, unless it's something really s significant, you are not going to remember who gave you what. It, that's just a fact of life. Because 
It, it may be sparkly, it may be big, it may be something really awesome, and it's that it gift this year, and you know, that's not what it's all about. What it's all about, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, and maybe I'm completely off my rocker. I've been told <laughs> that here recently. Um, not a chance. Well, it's it all depends on who you talk to. Anyway, um, here's the thing, man. There, it's all about what what you feel in your heart, who you share these experiences with. Not just opening the, the gifts or going around a dinner table. It is about that fundamental connection that you have with your friends, with your family, your loved ones, the, the ones that mean the most to you. And I, I understand that if you are especially a part of a larger family or gathering, you may run across a person or two that you may not see eye to eye on or with during the course of the year. That's fine. We're all human. We all have we all have our ways of dealing with things. We have ways of looking at things. It all depends on what your personal experiences have been. But I also firmly believe that at this time of year, this is the perfect opportunity to not necessarily focus on what you don't agree with, but to embrace what you do. Because in on some level, even if it's something small, you will find that basic fundamental of connection, even if it's just a respect and admiration for the holidays themselves. Now, we can sit here all day long and talk about how this is the right way to go about things, this is the wrong way to go about things, and everybody's got an opinion of what is right and wrong in this day and age, but it does come back down to fundamentals. It does come back down to black and white. It comes down to right and wrong. In your heart of hearts, you know what, what your intentions are anytime you embark on some sort of extracurricular activity or a fundraiser or something that, ha that helps the community in which you live. Or maybe that you don't live. You saw an ad or you heard something that somebody need, needed some help. You and your family step up and adopt a family. That's something that we have done over the course of the last few years. We've adopted families, you know, ones that are really struggling. That, my friends, is what the holidays are all about. It's not about me. It's not about him. It's not about you. It's about us as a whole. And I feel like in this day and age, well, that there is no more emphasis on us. It's all about me, right? So my wish for each and every one of you in this holiday season and moving forward to 2022 is that we reshift our focus. Quit worrying so much about what benefits us individually but how we can make a tremendous impact and a change in the world around which we live. Because I feel like there is so much emphasis on this barrage of, neg of negativity and everybody under the sun will tell you, you can't change the world. I call BS. There will be people who tell you that you're not doing enough. I don't think that's, that, that, that's accurate. Amen. It starts with one person. It starts with one movement. And we got to quit worrying about what isn't and worry about what is, what is here and now. Our lives should not be, should not revolve around a piece of electronic. It should be around the people that you love and care about the most. And once we get back to that basic fundamental, I feel like a lot of us, most of us, will have a happier, more fulfilling life and just our overall existence. Yes, there will be things in our world that irritate us. There will be things in our lives that make us mad. There will be things that will present themselves as challenges. But as long as you focus on what's truly important, and that is the happiness, fundamental, basic happiness for yourselves, for your friends, and for your family. And as long as we can find a way to broadcast that 
or to share that with our with, with our fellow brothers and sisters, man and woman, family, friends. This world can slowly but surely return to a much happier place as long as you shift your focus as to what is truly important. Anything you would like to add to that? Because I felt like I just went went on for the last half. That hour. was great. I mean, that's 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 what it should be, you know, one hundred percent. I mean, that that should be a piece that everybody watches every single year because it brings you back to square one. Mm -hmm. You know, it brings you back to childhood. It brings you back to the simplicity of giving and the simplicity of doing something that's not something you always do and it's not for you. Right. You know, but in in the in the end you'll realize it really was for you, you know? It was just in here and not through the, through the dollar, you know? There's a lot of people that I, that, that I have talked to, you know, that I know haven't been big fans of the holiday season. And yeah. it, like I said, or at the very top of this program here tonight, that really bothers me because this, this time of year is supposed to be, what, you know, and I, and I understand that we're, we're all dealing with a lot of different challenges and things of this nature on so many levels. Yeah, every day. But at the same time, you know, there's, in all reality, there's only so much that we can do. If, yeah. if, so, if something is out of our control, I mean, we, we can react to it, we can have a feeling about it, but we can't really let that dictate who and what we are, how we present ourselves, how we treat other people. And that's a big thing, man, is if you're unhappy with yourself or you're going through this funk or whatever, we talked before we came on the air here tonight, you know, I'm very much a person that is very much in a funk right now, a lot of inner turmoil happening. But that's not your fault. That's not your fault. So why am I going to take that out on people who by and large just don't have, they're not the reason why I'm feeling the way that I am. But you you look to the things in life that bring you le, le, legit joy. For me, it's this. For me, it's, rec it's recording a podcast. For me, it's spending time with friends, with family, people that I love, care about, respect. That's that puts life in perspective. And not just the here and now, not just in the month of, of December, but every single day that I wake up on the right side of the ground, I try to find and focus on, the, on at least one thing that brings me some, some degree of legitimate joy and happiness. And by and large, I'm a very blessed man because there is a lot of people that are dealing with a lot worse issues and, and circumstances and somehow they are able to put a smile on their own face even when they're met with insurmountable issues that my issues are almost non-existent when you compare I mean, yep. but you can you really can't compare because it is important to you. Whatever you're dealing with is important to you. You shouldn't discount that. But in the grand scheme of things, you got to come to realization that it's not always that deep, man. No, it's not. It's not. And and it's too, if you have to give a gift, for me, giving something that means somebody something to somebody, that that's the best gift ever. Yep. So if you're not one to, oh, yeah, I want to give the best gift or anything like that, but give give a gift to somebody like this is a gift and a pleasure and honor for me to be here tonight with you. You know, I, I think very highly of you and always have since I got to, to local 598. And now, you know, we're in there. There are three years of knowing each other. And, you know, God, I hope it turns into 30 and then 300, you know. Yeah, I, I couldn't say enough good things about you, you know, Brother Klaus. But uh, if you have to give a gift, make sure it counts. Jason Klaus is a He's the biggest passionate person about wrestling that I know, <laughs> besides Brother Q. Right, Brother Q. He he. We went. He to knows a, the stuff. Yeah, we went to a trivia night together with him and Eric Cherry, and uh, man, they, they were busting the knowledge out, and I was just floored. I, yeah. I was just writing answers down. I couldn't even get to get the answers out fast enough. But 
you're you're on that level with them, and, and I totally love that because I mean, again, as a kid, I was on that TV, I was at, you know, the Silver Dome or, or events like that, and uh, you know, with that being said, season of giving, I wanted to make sure I gave you something that meant something to you. Um, I'm a lover of collectibles and and all that stuff, and me and Jason have talked a lot about it, and uh, you know, this is his guy, Mr. Hulk Hogan, and. Uh, you guys could see that, but oh that's a gosh. sticker from 1985, and uh, I love the sticker when I seen it. But what's on Hogan's shirt meant more than anything to me as well, because it directs towards Union, and it t it says American Made on there. Uh, but yeah, that that's his guy. So Merry Christmas, brother. I really appreciate that. Well, yeah. Listen, real real quick story. I know we're about to run out of time. Real real quick story. Last year. Um, I, I was at work and uh, you and Fallon had, had got me a gift and um, you know she had gotten me the, uh, the, the bobblehead of, <laughs> of the frog, frog from, <laughs> from Looney Tunes because one night I, I don't even know I was, I was trying she was not in the best of spirits I was trying to make her laugh and I did the whole hello my baby I still can't believe you did it I can't either <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't pull a hamstring but um Will uh, custom painted a baseball, and it was all Hulk Hogan. Like it was one of it, to this day, it's one of my absolute most favorite things that that I have, and it has a very special place in my office. Whenever I go down to write something, to record something, to film something, it's one of the things. Like it's on a shelf with a lot of stuff that my brother is on or, or, or gave me, it Beautiful. meant that much to me. And uh, just, you know, I mean, as wonderful as this is and the baseball thing is, brother, your friendship is, it means more than any of those things. 100% right back and, at you, uh, man. I really, I really appreciate you taking time out to, to be here tonight, and we're we're gonna have you back on for sure for a Klaus and Q show. I can't wait to see that here in uh, here in the next few months. But that will debut on January the twenty first at six o'clock here on ON TV. I appreciate Joe Johnson. I appreciate Ian Locke and all the fine fine people that make this show here possible. We wish you. A very happy holiday season. We'll see you next year right here on ON TV. Merry Christmas.